Well, off the back of our huge upset in the second round of the DFB Pocket against Bayern Munich last week, we are still undefeated this season. That has carried on in the games we've played off camera since that episode. Today, we've got a chance to hopefully extend our lead going into the winter break to beyond 10 points as we take on two teams last season who are from the Bundesliga, but this season struggling down a division. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 56 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and come out today we take on both Nuremberg and Jan Regensburg, two teams who last season were up in the Bundesliga this season. They are mid-table down here in this second tier of German football. Hopefully a chance for us to get a big league going in to that winter break on top of the table. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but we've just played the two games off the back of that big episode at the end of last week including that huge upset win over Bayern Munich in the second round of the DFB Pockle away from home. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner to be fair, some quite big games since then as well. We took on the team and second on the table in Fortuna Dusseldorf, as well as a Holstein Kiel team who so far have been the only team to beat us since we have gone to a Gagan press. And thankfully, we did pick up wins in both of those games, albeit both by narrow school lines of one goal and nil. First up, it was away from home against second place Fortuna Dusseldorf, and we picked up that 1 0 win thanks to an early goal in the second half. Through Thibaut Cliche, this game was one we did have the edge in, thankfully, just after half time. We did grab that goal, so thankfully, a big win there against the team who were our closest challengers on the league table. And off the back of that, a bit of revenge on Holstein Kiel after they were the first team to beat us with that gag impression so far, the only team late last season. This game was a lot more even, and actually, they were a bit unlucky here not to pick up a result. They had more shots than us, but thankfully, we hit a lot more on target. And a goal just before half time to Krasnicki did mean we did pick up a 1 0 win. Also, that a Tilgan goal was a very, very debatable one whether he was offside. So it could have actually been a 2 0 result. But thankfully, we did pick up another win in that game. So it does mean that we are still unbeaten here. Hopefully, that can be the case going into the winter break. We've got three games left. We're going to play two of those in today's episode against both Nuremberg and Jan Regensburg. But at the moment, we have a seven point gap over Fortuna Dusseldorf. But that gap could extend out to 10 points on this next match day if we do win because Fortuna Dusseldorf have already played and they, if we go back and find them, did drop points at home against Heidenheim. So it's a chance for us here to get a double digit lead potentially going into that winter break and that would surely be a good enough advantage for us to hopefully not just be getting promoted come the end of the season but also winning the league as long as we don't have that massive drop off off the back of the break like we had here last season but going into these games in today's episode unfortunately we have suffered an injury since you were last here Tom Gale picked up an injury in training to be fair he might be back for the second game of today's episode but we'll be missing this first one with a pull groin he is out for a couple more days as our captain and ball playing defender so it does mean that Zayn Mon Louis will come in and get his first start for the club in that position hopefully that doesn't mean that we'll drop off our defensive late. Has actually improved quite a bit these days. We are the second best defensive team, but thankfully that's our only injury concern going into the first game of today's episode. We do take on a Nuremberg team who, just like our second opposition in Jan Regensburg, do come to the season having last season been up in the Bundesliga. But as you can see, the recent form is very, very average. Just one win in their last five games, and that was against Armenia Bielefeld by a scoreline of 4 free. So certainly when they're on their game, they are a dangerous team. But with them having struggled quite a bit lately, you'd hope this is a game that we can win. Also worth noting, they lost two mines in the second round of the DFB Pockle by one goal to nil. Of course, that is the team we are playing first up back from the winter break in the third round of that competition. So a good result here might give us some confidence going in to that cup game as well. And off the back of that, we take on a team doing just a little bit better having also found themselves in the same situation as Nuremberg coming down from the Bundesliga last season. That is Jan Regensburg. These guys certainly in a bit better form. Two wins from their last five 
and two in their last three over Magdeburg and Bochum. But still, the way we're going at the moment, you'd like to think we can pick up results here against two mid-table teams and hopefully go into that winter break with an unbeaten record and hopefully this season continue our good form once we do come back from that break. But hopefully that injury to Dom Gale doesn't derail us too much. In today's episode, we'll come back shortly and get stuck into the first game away from home as we take on Nuremberg down in 10th. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. Here are Nuremberg coming to this one. Some pretty average form they are going with a 4-3-3. Hopefully we can continue to pull on the misery as I said before. Just the one change for us, Mongolia comes in for the injured Gale. But hopefully Gale will be back for that second game of today's episode. And we can keep this unbeaten streak going. And it's only taken four minutes for the first highlight in this game. It's a corner here in favour of Nuremberg in the dark red. It's cleared away, but Lons there with a shot thankfully gets blocked. Potentially a chance for us here to actually do something on the counter-attack. Salue does get inside the opposition half, but decent tackle there from Kike. Plays that one out to Campanelli. Will this result in a highlight? Unfortunately, can't quite link up there with Krasnicki. Now they clear that one out to Dorenzo. We try and float that one into the mixer for Salue, but it does look like here Nuremberg are going to be able to clear their lines, albeit a little bit helter-skelter there in the midfield. Tilgan plays that one over nicely for Krasnicki. Good save there, though, from their goalkeeper. And the follow-up is from two tight angles. So an interesting highlight there. Chances down both ends. But it remains nil all coming up to the 15-minute mark. And up to the 20-minute mark, we're getting the next highlight in this game. It's a free kick here in favour of the home team since you were last here. Racine Bullock has picked up a yellow card. But so far, looking slightly the better team in this game, albeit I think most of the action came from that highlight, which you did see, but Lon's on the ball there for Nuremberg, and they eventually make their way inside our half. We try and put a good press on them, but big chance here for Frolling. Thankfully, though, that ball just a little bit too deep for him, and Krapakas can come out and claim it. And now we try and play out from the back. Mon Louis there was briefly on the ball in his first start here for Locomotive Leipzig. So far, hasn't got much game time. Tom Gall being our captain and being quite injury resistant usually in that ball playing defender role, but Nuremberg are back on the attack. Dick is there trying to pick out that top right corner. Thankfully, that one's just high and wide. It is still nil all, albeit only a few minutes later, and it is another free kick here in favor of the home team. So, so far, these highlights do feel like they're staying at least in favor of the opposition. Now, Milo there gets in behind our defense. Chance there from a tight angle, but Colley comes up with a very important block, and Krapakas also with a save. We're somewhat under pressure, but thankfully, it's still nil all. And lots of action here around the 20 to 30 minute mark. Only a few minutes off the back of that previous chance to Nuremberg. This time it's a free kick here in our favor. And Campanelli starts to charge his way down that right hand side. Good control now. Bullock plays that one for True Krasnicki. Good run and makes his way inside the box. Will bury that one bottom left corner. And off the back of a few highlights there, which did feel like Nuremberg might be starting to get on top in this game. We go down the other end and do pick up a goal and make it 1 0. And hopefully that can get us on the front foot here a little bit more. Krasnicki still had a lot of work to do, but thankfully just in behind the defense, that shot wasn't actually that far into the corner, but thankfully the goalkeeper didn't get a touch on it. And we take a 1-0 lead just shy of the half hour mark. And only a few minutes shy of half time, we eventually get the next highlight in this game off the back of taking that 1-0 lead around about 15 minutes ago. And it is here again, Nuremberg, who start to get on the attack. And Bart's a nice square there for KK. Thankfully, someone there puts a good foot in and we are able to clear our lines a bit like that so far in this game. They have had chances to have Nuremberg, but we've just scrambled well enough to make sure they have not got on the score sheet. But yet again, they are in position here. Through Ingvartsen, three of our players there did try and sandwich him, but unfortunately they are back in position. Krasnicki there had a chance to clear that one away a bit better, but unfortunately gave it back to a Nuremberg player. It's very dicey here. There's lots going on, and unfortunately there was a tackle from behind there, I think on Milo, and there might be a penalty, albeit the referee is going over to have a look at the little screen on the far side. I haven't actually seen that too much this year in Football Manager, so maybe this one might get overturned, but usually that's a very rare occurrence in Football Manager. We'll just see what VAR says, and indeed, no penalties. We're really scraping by here late in this first half, Nuremberg, with some good chances, but thankfully, we just scramble enough to make sure they don't put the ball in the back of the net. It was a very even first half, thankfully. We took a chance just shy of the half-hour mark through Krasnicki, but around that, really, Nuremberg 
We're on the front foot, but despite that, the stats are quite even, and we go into the shed somehow with a 1-0 lead away from home. One changer at halftime, obviously, with Racine Bullock on that yellow card. We'll bring on Chaiwa for him. As well as that, to be fair, most players out there are on a decent rating, so I think that's our only sub we're going to use here at halftime. Happy for the scoreline, but not so much with the performance. We'll tell the guys going well could be better, and we'll get the second half underway somehow with a 1-0 lead. And only five minutes into the second half, the first highlight here is a throw in, in our favour down the left-hand side, and we start to make our way near enough to inside of the opposition half, and we eventually spread that one out right to Campanelli, plays that one for to Krasnicki. Now Cueto with a touch to take that one around the goalkeeper, just evades the defender who stuck a leg out, and that is a good start here in the second half, and now somehow we are turning up in what has been a very even game so far, Campanelli is down to a red heart. Hopefully he can recover. He's been pretty good for us so far since stepping in for Florian Huxa after we did sign him. But good work there from Cueto to take that one around the goalkeeper. And we make it 2-0 early in the second half. And very short off the back of that first highlight in the second half to make it 2-0 there through Daniel Cueto. This time it's a free kick in our favour. We take it short playing out from the back and Krasnicki is on the ball again. Another good ball there through to Yakuba Salai. will chip the goalkeeper. It's well placed right down the middle and it bounces just before it goes over the line and he makes it 3-0 and surely that's going to wrap up three points and hopefully we can indeed go into the winter break unbeaten. This has been a very good start to the second half off the back of a slightly dicey ending to that first one but a quick fire double through Quato and Salui makes it 3-0 Locomotive Leipzig. And shortly off the back of that third goal, just checking here in some player fitness, and we've got Campanelli there on a yellow card and a red heart, so we're going to bring on Huxa for him, and also Dorenzo is on a 6.6, .6, not going that well, and is actually quite an injury-prone player, so I think we'll give him a rest and bring on Gary Bass for this last half hour, give him some game time off of the bench with now it should be an unassailable lead of 3-0 with a half hour left. And up to the 69 minute mark, a nice time here for a corner, albeit it is to Nuremberg. Thankfully, a Tilgen does head that one away, but now Martinez finds himself in space here. Squares that one nicely for Abdul Kalim Kamara. He will grab a goal back here for Nuremberg, and to be fair, they probably deserve something from this game so far, especially that late flurry in the first half, but it takes them until the last 20 minutes or so to grab a goal. Martinez there plays that one into the mixer for Kamara. Not too sure there what Bass is doing at left back. No defensive work, and unfortunately, it's pegged back to 3-1. And shortly off the back of that goal back to Nuremberg, we are going to make some substitutions here, just checking in on player fitness. We've got two players down to Red Hearts and two subs left, so Warrington will come on for Coachella playing well, but we'll bring on some fresh legs, and also the same applies for Osman Atilgen. Coming on for him will be Triple B. That's our last subs used. Off the back of Nuremberg, making it 3-1. And we just entered the last five minutes of this game, still up by three goals to one, but we'll just try and make sure that we do hold on here by time-wasting all these last couple of minutes. But to be fair, it's actually been quite a comprehensive win since halftime, especially two early goals to make it 3-0. They grab one back on the 69-minute mark, but thankfully since then, they haven't quite kicked on as much as they would have hoped. And it does look like here, we are going to pick up three more points in the league. We are on a really good run at the moment, not dropping many points at all, albeit... That's a bit dodgy at the back and frolling. We'll put that one past Krapikas, who kind of came out and didn't get there off the back of a ball over the top. And indeed, that goal has been awarded. So now I think we are just going to time waste even more than we were previously and also lower the tempo as well as the passing directness. Also, we'll get our guys to slow the pace down in terms of goalkeeper distribution and also hold our shape when position has been won and also regroup, because of course now there's still three minutes left for them to try and grab an equaliser. Also, we'll drop our front line, so we are now playing with a mid-press, but Dickers here played that one back to Kike, who to be fair is having a good game, and Krapikas comes out, doesn't quite get there, and gets beaten from that shot from Frolling, so a good end to this half here from Nuremberg. They make it 2 all in the second half, but hopefully that goal that we did grab in the first half is going to be the difference maker. We'll just wait here and see if any more highlights do take place. As you can see, it's actually been a bit of a fortunate win, this one. You could argue Nuremberg did have the better of things, especially in terms of XG, but thankfully we've somehow come out there with a 3-2 win away from home, with the fact we had a 3-0 lead there. A little bit surprising, but thankfully we did, because we nearly stuffed it up late. Both Bass and Huxa didn't have the greatest games when they came on 
for that last half hour. Also, Krapakas, not too great in goal, albeit thankfully their goalkeeper and one of their wingbacks also had poor games. So it was a bit of an average effort there defensively from both teams, but thankfully we still do enough to pick up three points there with a three to win. And it does mean we'll extend our gap on top of the table to 10 points to the team in second below us and even further back to the team in third. So at the moment, we are looking very, very good for automatic promotion up to the Bundesliga come the end of this season. But second up today, hopefully we might get a chance to extend that lead even more as we take on Jan Regensburg, who are down in ninth. And we are back with the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. Obviously, Tom Gale is back, so he comes in for Mongoli, who drops down to the bench. Lucas Search today's our right back cover because Huxa is out with the flu. Hopefully, that doesn't prove too costly, albeit Campanelli doing a good job there. Uh, Jan Regensburg looked like they were going with a 4 2 3 1. Fortuna Dusseldorf did drop points again going to this match day, so a really big chance for us again to extend our gap on top of the table. Hopefully, we make the most of it at home. And just past the five minute mark, we get the first highlight in this game. It was the Jan Regensburg who were on the ball, but they try and play a ball over the top. Thankfully, our defense does deal with it. We pump that one deep, and Osman Tilgen is on the ball, plays that one centrally there for Queto. Back out to a Tilgen. Encouraging signs here early from this game. Good ball in there for Silway, but surprisingly, misses the target. That hasn't happened too much this season, but a good early chance, unfortunately. Still nil all. And not too long off the back of that opening highlight, we are now down the other end here for a free kick to Jan Regensburg. And to be fair, that one was not too far away at all. Thankfully, just goes wide and it is still nil all coming up to the 20 minute mark. And in fact, shortly off the back of that, it is now another highlight here, potentially in favor of the opposition. We try and clear our lines off the back of that front horn. Does take that one into the box. Thankfully, we win it back, albeit it's a bit of an average clearance there. And now Asano makes his way inside the box we try and put pressure on him and it's some good passing there inside the box and Asano who had a pretty big hand in that does put that one away in the top left corner we'll just wait and see here if he was offside but it didn't take long he is on and we go 1-0 down here at home it's Hilgen as well as Dorenzo tried to put pressure on him but he evades him and then gets back into the box and unleashes a good first time finish there into that top left corner it's a well worked goal and for the first time in a little while, we've got a bit of resistance and we are 1-0 down on the 20 minute mark. But very short at the back of that goal to Jan Regensburg, we are now down the other end for a goal kick in their favour. Thankfully we win that one in there and Quieto moves that one on to Krasnicki. And there's some good passing. So the way does get in behind. Tight angle but beats the goalkeeper this time. Sneaks it inside that near post. And we weren't behind for long at all. We make it one all very shortly off the back. Of going 1-0 down, it is a quick reply and instant equaliser. Bullock there back up to Queto and Salue. Just sitting on the shoulder there of that centre back and beats the goalkeeper at his near post. He won't be too happy about that one. But thankfully, we weren't behind for long. Some good passing off the back of that goal kick to Jan Regensburg. And we make it one all just past the 20 minute mark. And another game where there's a bit happening here between the 20 and 30 minute marks. This time Jan Regensburg do have a player starting to drive inside the box. Thankfully, Colley does get a foot in there and plays that one to Campanelli. And that's rather fortunate there. But we win the ball back in the near enough to the midfield. And now it's nicely squared there for Daniel Cueto. And he puts it away in that left-hand corner. It got a little bit messy there off the back of that Shamozel in the midfield. Three of our players did get it back for us. But then they kind of eased off the ball for some reason. Eventually, Salue played that one forward to Krasnicki, then to Cueto for he took one too many touches there, but thankfully still beats the goalkeeper. It's a quick fire double, and we go from being 1-0 down to 2-1 in front. And going forward about 10 minutes off the back of that second goal, now it's a corner here in our favour. We go far post, unfortunately. No one gets their head on the end of that for us, and then it's one then there by Jan Regensburg, and they try and do something on the counter-attack, but great work there from Campanelli. What a signing. He is turning out to be on a free transfer off the back of letting go of Panzu Ernesto. At least trying to find an upgrade on him and then letting go of him off the back of transfer deadline day. But it is Jan Regensburg here on the attack. Big chance there for Gonzalez. Thankfully, Krapikas does just get enough of a touch on that to put that one onto the post. And eventually, they take another shot. Thankfully, it goes out for a goal kick. And right off the back of that, we do see that goal kick. We take it short. Bullock will square that one for Coachella. Over there for Tom Gall back in the team. And now Krapikas goes on a slight adventure, albeit not outside the box. Poor pass there, though. I think that was from Coachella. 
and Owusu is on the ball, but Krasniki with some great work to win that one back for us. He tries to play a ball forward and Salue actually wins that one and buries it in the back of the net and we are somehow free one up in this game. It's kind of similar to the previous one, but this time we've had to come back from a 1-0 deficit and all the action is happening in the first half. Great work there from Krasniki. Plays this ball forward Salue. Looks like too much strength there. For the defender, he wins that battle and then buries it. And in the space of around about 15 minutes, we've gone from 1-0 down to 3-1 in front. And that was it for the first half in the second game of it. today's episode. And we go into the Sheds 3-1. This one going a bit more comfortably at halftime than that previous game, albeit. There's been a lot of action in Jan Regensburg. Certainly have put us under pressure, especially taking a 1-0 lead on the 20 minute mark, but thankfully off the back of that, we've just exploded and scored three goals. We're going to take off Dorenzo. He's actually really struggling out there on a 6.2. Hopefully Bass goes a bit better than he did in that previous game where he came off the bench and didn't do a lot that was useful. Hopefully today he is a bit better. We'll just make that one substitution here at halftime. Tell the guys the same as we did in that previous game. It's going well, but I think we can do better. We're a little bit shaky at times and we in fact get a highlight here immediately. From the restart, hopefully a similar reaction to that previous game where we did come out of the sheds and really put them away in the early stages of that second half. We hold the ball well here and Atilgan was on it, albeit loses out quite quickly. And Gonzalez does start to get in behind from a tight angle, just holds up the ball there, plays that one back to Horn. And Jans Horn will score his first goal of the season. It's the complete opposite of what I wanted from that halftime talk. And now this is well and truly game on with still 45 minutes left plus injury time. It's a very early goal back there to Jan Regensburg in the second half. Good play there from Gonzalez. And to be fair to Horn, that is a very good finish. And now that scoreline looks a bit more accurate from what I'm saying. 3-2 early stages of the second half. And not too long off the back of that opening goal of the second half to Jan Regensburg, which did make it 3-2. They are in position yet again. And good ball over the top there. This time they find Asano down that right wing who scored the first goal of the game. It goes in there for length, thankfully. That shot takes a big deflection. Krapakas can make a save, but it's fair to say Jan Regensburg have come out of the sheds and are really firing. But thankfully, we are still up by 3-2. And going forward up to the hour mark, and I think we're going to make another substitution at this time. Just hopefully try and solidify things off the back of a pretty average start to the second half. Coachella is only on a 6.5, so we're going to bring on Warrington for him. And hopefully that might just settle things down and we can hold on to this 3-2 lead. And only a couple of minutes off the back of that previous substitution, Bass has picked up a yellow card here. So I think what we're going to do is actually take him off because so far today he's been pretty poor at left back. What we're going to do is bring on, I think we might bring on Zane Mon louis our ball playing defender option, because Tom Gall can play left back, and that means that Campanelli can stay at right back, so a little bit of a shuffle around here, with 25 minutes to go, but not too happy with our defensive work so far in the second half, hopefully that sub means we can hold on to this 3-2 lead. And going forward 10 more minutes off the back of that previous substitution, taking off Bass, and now checking there's a lot of players out there who are down to Red Hearts, one of those is Luca Cambinelli and also Tom Gall. Got a few players out there who we might need to take off at the back. We're going to bring on Luca's search in place of Campanelli being the right back cover for this game. And as well as that, I think we're going to bring on Chaiwa for Racine Bullock. Going to strengthen that defense as much as we can for the last 15 or so minutes of this game as we continue to look to hold on to our free to advantage. And we're just entering the last five minutes of this game. We've been time wasting since the 80 minute mark. Thankfully at the moment, it does seem to be working, albeit late highlight here. It's a free kick in our favor. Warrington tries to curve that one top right corner, but thankfully there haven't been too many highlights since those early ones in the second half where Jan Regensburg did make it 3-2. This game again has been very even, but thankfully we come away yet again with a 3-2 win, albeit this time that one did feel a lot closer than the Nuremberg game, even though stats-wise this time we were probably the better team, especially based on XG, but the way that the game went this time, it did feel like that game was a lot more in the balance with the score line being 3-2 for most of the second half and also going 1-0 down quite early in this one. But thankfully, we finished off that second half pretty well off the back of conceding. We grabbed three goals in and around that 15 minutes in between the 20 and 35 minute mark. And thankfully, that is the difference maker. Two 3-2 wins in today's episode over the Team 2 last season. We're up in the Bundesliga. And that does mean for now anyway, we're 13 points clear in top spot 
on the two Bundesliga tables, so that is going to be a very healthy advantage no matter what happens in our last game before the break when we do take on 1860 Munich with a few close results, but thankfully we pick up maximum points with 3-2 wins that one over Jan Regensburg. So two close but good results in those two games in today's episode against the former Bundesliga teams. As you can see, Bochum did come out the following day and pick up a 3-0 win over Darmstadt. They have made their way back inside that top three and into the other automatic promotion spot. But still, it does mean we're 11 points clear of them with one more game to go before the halfway mark of the season. That one against 1860 Munich. Hopefully we can pick up a win against those guys. You'd imagine we would playing the way we are at the moment. And that should put us in a really good position when we do come back from the winter break in tomorrow's episode, of course, for that third round clash in the DFB Pockel, where we do take on mines, but things going very well here at Lokomotiv Leipzig in the first half of the season. We might come back from the winter break, hopefully still undefeated. And also most of our games have been wins as well, picking up maximum points from most of our outings. But I think that will do it for today's episode. As I said, two good wins. And now with a significant gap on top of the two Bundesliga, if you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell as well. We'll come back tomorrow off the back of the winter break. It does mean we're just going to play one game off camera, that one against 1860 Munich, before we do go on a little bit of a holiday, hopefully. The same thing that happens last season does not this time around. And even if it does, we've actually got a good points advantage to play with that we can just muck around for a little bit. But hopefully that is not the case and we can come back and pick up where we left off. But first up, it is a tough match in the third round of the DFB Pockel. We take on Mainz, albeit having beaten Bayern Munich. That should actually be easy, but we'll see how we go in that one. And off the back of that, we'll take on the other team who I think might still be undefeated. In fact, they're not, but they were the other team who lasted undefeated the longest before it was just us this season. They're right up there in terms of the promotion hunt, and that is Augsburg. We picked up a draw on the opening day against those guys, and this time it is away from home, so that could be an interesting matchup yet again against Mario Goetz's men. And also, we'll see if anything happens in terms of the transfer window in the first half of January in that episode as well, but we'll come back tomorrow hopefully still undefeated and see if we can make our way through to the fourth round of the DFB Pockle for the first time and hopefully also extend our gap on top of the two Bundesliga as we take on Augsburg. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.